One of the most commonly asked questions in the Sonic fanbase, uttered to the point of ongoing drollery, is... How can Sonic breathe in space? Our intrepid hero is no stranger to boldly going where no hedgehog has gone before, but just how does he outlast the harshness of the Earth's outer limits? Well, I can tell you with certainty that he is breathing. But how, you ask? I am the Sega Scourge, the Sonic Theorist, tackling 25 years of classic and modern Sonic alike. Let's find out. How does Sonic breathe in space? We've all asked ourselves this question at some point. While some see it as simply a part of Sonic's physiology or a simple cartoon characteristic that needs no discussion, neither of those answers make sense. They simply cannot be the case. Think. Sonic can supposedly breathe in space, but he can also drown. Putting aside his extraordinary athletic abilities, Sonic operates on the basic physical level of any other living creature. He breathes. <sighs> so if he breathes, if he inhales that normal life-supporting component of the air like a normal living creature, if he can also miraculously survive in space, then there must be a logical reason for that. Firstly, let's examine what we know. Let's take into consideration some of the occurrences we've seen, predominantly those where Sonic has left Earth's reaches. The Death Egg Zone from Sonic 2 as well as 3 and Knuckles. All of the Space Colony Arc stages from SA2 such as Crazy Gadget and Final Rush. All the space-themed advanced stages like Egg Rocket and X Zone. Deadline from Sonic Rush. A whole bunch of Sonic Color stages. Starlight Carnival, Asteroid Coaster, Terminal Velocity. Honestly, we could go on all day with these, so let's just move right to the point. I believe all these stages share one thing in common. One thing that would explain Sonic intermittently running out into the cold cosmos in these zones. In all these areas, there is undoubtedly some kind of atmospheric field surrounding the structures such as the Death Egg, the Ark, and the Interstellar Amusements, supplying them with artificial gravity and life support systems. This would explain how the characters are able to move freely throughout these areas without floating all over the place, as well as how they're able to breathe despite being on the outer perimeter of the structures. Of course, there are portions of these zones where the gravity appears to be malfunctioning, but not only that, there do appear to be segments of some of these zones where there is no atmospheric field at all, as evidenced by Sonic Adventure 2's Eternal Engine. When destroying the hatches by detonating the dynamite packs, the resulting cavity in the hull causes explosive decompression. But you might have failed to realize that this one simple level gimmick has just given us a very important lead. A vacuum. Just like in real life when a bridge between two spaces is produced, one space full of pressurized air and the other, the frictionless, airless void, the resulting reaction would cause the air to rapidly escape into the other space through that bridge. In other words, if you were to punch a hole in your spaceship, all the oxygen and nitrogen molecules inside would be pushed outside, sweeping into space, creating the, quote, vacuum effect. The effects of a vacuum do apply in Sonic's world. This proves that space in the Sonic U is the same as our own, completely airless. And also, remember Sonic Unleashed's opening cutscene? The good doctor expelled the Werehog from his ship through the use of a vacuum, once again proving that the mechanics of space function the same as they do in real life. So how does all this relate to my theory on how the Blue Hedgehog can survive in space? Well, I think fans have long since overlooked an obvious detail. Consider this theory. What if it's not that he's breathing in space, but in fact, it's that he's still inside Earth's atmosphere? And of course, you ask, how? 
given that in many instances, Sonic's clearly been seen falling far from Earth into the planet's orbit. Well, I have a thesis on how it might be possible that he's still been inside the atmosphere in all these instances. As we know, Sonic's world is exceptionally different from our own real-world counterpart. Permeated with floating continents and structures some thousands of feet in the sky, Angel Island, Little Planet, Babylon Garden, and the Lost Hex are just a few that can spring to mind. And one ever-appreciable question that has always troubled me is, on all these remarkably exorbitant locations, why are the characters still breathing without an issue? Realistically, at that altitude, there would be a substantial oxygen drop. Combined with decreased air pressure, this would have massive effects on the cardiovascular system of any living creature. Shortness of breath, dizziness, and tiredness, indicative of altitude sickness. But almost none of the characters ever suffer from this, unless they all have a super-enhanced hemoglobin level, which I doubt. There should be no reason for how they're unaffected. So why could that be? Well, I hypothesize that the Earth in the Sonic franchise may have a larger atmosphere, almost twice the size of our own. This simple concept would perfectly explain all of Sonic's celestial survivals. Of course, that doesn't mean Sonic hasn't been caught outside the atmosphere on some occasions. When falling off the Space Colony arc stages in Sonic Adventure 2, the characters will combust as they careen towards the planet below, seemingly entering the planet's atmosphere. This same event can be attributed to Shadow's supposed death during the game's finale. And in Sonic Unleashed, Sonic the Werehog is blasted off into space, tumbling towards the Earth fully conscious, but then for some reason has blacked out in the next scene. I believe the reason for this lack of consciousness is that Sonic suffered from exposure to a vacuum. Violent hypoxia, his arterial blood pressure would fluctuate. Gas and water vapor would rapidly flow outward through the airways and marked swelling of the body would begin to develop due to water vapor under soft skin tissue, during which he would suffer excessive convulsions and paralysis, and eventually, unconsciousness. That doesn't mean he would die, however, no. There have been several cases of humans surviving exposure to a vacuum. A human being would typically lose consciousness somewhere between 12 to 15 seconds, and Sonic was exposed for much less than that, and he was most likely saved from re-entry to the planet by that same mysterious energy shield that stopped his fatal fall in the next scene. And with all this evidence and affirmation regarding the effects of space on Sonic, the various floating landmarks of Sonic's world accompanied by my extended atmosphere theory Everything becomes all too clear. So let's break this down. What would happen to Earth if the atmosphere was twice as large? Well, if Earth's atmosphere was doubled, then the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere would double as well. Meaning, with this additional surface or sea level air pressure, object mass and density would reorient. For example, birds would fly much farther with increased ease and greatly improved performance or perhaps allowing a certain echidna to catch the air under his dreads, enabling him to glide, or a certain twin-tailed fox or long-eared rabbit to fly, or a hedgehog to slowly freefall from great heights. Do you see what I mean? Other changes an extended atmosphere would bring is insects of unusual sizes. Many insects rely on oxygen diffusion for respiration, just like other creatures. Therefore, if the proportion of oxygen gas in the atmosphere was increased, the bug's gas exchange ability would also have to increase, and their tracheae would have to be larger. They would grow. Might explain, uh, the size of a certain bee that we all love to hate. Yeah. Lastly, all the oxygen-enriched air would also improve people's cognitive abilities and physical prowess. Seemingly normal individuals would feel more athletic, stronger, and function above their limits otherwise. There would be a large variation in our moods, too. Everyone would predominantly feel more alive and carefree. Entire cities would be lively and full of happy people. We would love and care for our fellow man more. The world would be united. But that's supposition. But certainly, the expanded atmosphere would radically change the world and life as we know it. It's an assumption, 
But I have a strong hunch that this theory explains a few of the aforementioned factors in the Sonic universe. In instances where Sonic has gone up into the limits, like for example, hitching a ride on Eggman's rocket up to the Death Egg, he has always still been inside the atmospheric shell, continuing to breathe as normal. Undoubtedly up at the Death Egg's height, the air is quite thin, but all Sonic would have to do is hold on with what little air he has left until he can get inside the Death Egg, where oxygen would be restored. And that's just one of the times that's happened. It seems that all this time, fans of the series may have misconstrued Sonic's durability in the ocean of emptiness known as space. And all along, there's been an obvious yet stellar answer to this undying question in the Sonic community. A resolution of planetary proportions, a bigger atmosphere, shielding a bigger and far more breathtakingly incredible world than our own. A powerful planet, just as cool and blue as Sonic himself. So what do you guys think about this theory? I guess Sonic can't breathe in space after all. Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please show the channel some love by dropping a like and subscribing for more Sonic Theorist videos. Go check out my Metal Sonic theory if you haven't already. Also, I'd like to give special thanks to Sonic Wind Blue, Frokenock 3, and Riders Gaming for providing footage for this theory. Thanks so much, guys. It looks great. From me, the Sega Scourge, the Sonic Theorist, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.